Hi, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining. This video is going to be uh, earlier this September, we installed a IntelliDose controller, an automatic controller for our hydroponic lettuce. We also put one on our Beto buckets for tomatoes and cucumbers, but uh, this was how we went through and uh, did all the testing. It's a long video, so I apologize for that. Uh, what I'll do is try to index it so that you can skip to the portions that you may think are most relevant for your needs and for information. And uh, so we'll put that index on here. Also, don't forget, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We're really trying to grow the channel. We're trying to uh, get to a thousand subscribers and beyond. So we really appreciate those that have already subscribed to the channel. And if you're new, uh, hit that subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. And if you also would like to hit the notification bell, then as we upload new videos, you'll get a notifier that, you know, we put some new content up there. Hope you find this helpful and informative. Uh, again, thanks for watching the channel. Now let's go take a look at, you know, all of the uh, elements of putting in one of these uh, IntelliJose controllers. Hi everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm gonna show you the hydroponic uh, dosing system today. Behind me here is some of our lettuce in the NFT nutrient film technique uh, channels. And so we've got more that we're getting ready to put in here. So before we scale this side out and ultimately the other uh, half of this bay, we need to get our nutrient dosing system in place. So. Today, that's what we're gonna take you through. So as you've seen in a prior video, um, we've got a reservoir tank in place. We're actually starting to run this side of the NFT. That side, we started with a small reservoir. Uh, this will all now get uh, constructed out. You can see our Beto bucket tomatoes over there are doing fine. We've got a reservoir for that system. We'll ultimately put the same um, dosing system in there. Uh, I've got some uh, conduit channel, mounting channel across the back of that bay. I've got plywood out there painted, a backboard. And so that's what we're gonna put our dosing computers on. And so let's go take a look at those. While we're going up to look at these dosing computers and all the components of that, don't forget, like, subscribe, share our channel. Uh, we're trying to grow the channel. Hope you find it informative and helpful. And uh, it helps us out a lot if you subscribe and share it. So thanks so much for that. Let's go take a look now at these uh, dosing computers and the components. So when the greenhouses were uh, bought out and the operations were consolidated, they still had all the equipment in it. And so when we bought them and relocated them to the farm, all this componentry was still in there. Now, some of it's a little dated compared to the brand new stuff, but these are several thousand dollars a piece uh, to make these operational. So it's worth the uh, try to uh, bring them back to life and see if they'll function properly. So that's what we're gonna do here on the bench. We're going to uh, apply the power. We're gonna make sure that these control units, these are the actual controllers uh, made by IntelliDose. I think they were originally auto grow and then they got bought out maybe by IntelliDose, I'm not sure. I can still find the instructions online for these units. Uh, these are the EC probes. So the EC stands for electric conductivity. So what it measures is the amount of uh, material or nutrients and salts that are suspended in your water solution. And so it gives you a conductivity reading. Uh, these have a connector that goes into the bottom and then these are the pumps. And so these go into your different nutrients or let's say pH down, pH up, uh, so that you wanna stabilize your pH at a certain level, let's say 6.5. Uh, and so you may need to take, if you have water that's basic and not acidic, let's say it's you know out of the spigot, our well water is about 7.5, uh, 7.3 to 7.5 pH. So, uh, most of the plants in the hydroponic systems like it down around somewhere around six to six and a half. So in most of the cases we would want to pump in a little uh, acidic water or pH down. 
Um, if you have the opposite, let's say it, you know, you get it a little too low, then you could have uh, some pH up, which is basically bicarbonate and water, uh, baking soda and water, um, and it brings the pH up. The nutrient is uh, just a um, barrel of the nutrient solution that it can then administer to bring your EC, your conductivity reading up. Let's say lettuce likes 0.8. On the tomato side, our EC um, is about 1.2. Uh, on the lettuce side, the EC you want around 0.8. Uh, that's the uh, electric conductivity. It can also be measured in PPM or parts per million. There's two different uh, scales for that. There's a 500 and a 700 scale. Uh, we've just used EC, but any of the three scales are fine. And then, uh, so these are kind of some bellow pumps, uh, circulating pumps, and you can see it's flow. So it would pick up the solution here and it would deliver it into your reservoir here. Now what it does is it also has a plug that goes into the bottom of the controller and it's faded, but you can see over here, the black is common, the uh, red is left pump, the white is middle pump, and the blue is right pump. So that way you know which pinouts control the pump. Of course, this is your power that goes in um, that also uh, you know, provides power into your uh, control head. The next component is the actual pH probe. Now these have been out for quite a while, but I've done some reading. They'll need to be rehydrated or soaked in water. We'll be cleaning everything up, of course, uh, for about 24 hours. Uh, before then, we'll go through the calibration process. There's some solutions that uh, we'll put in there that are um, calibration solutions. So there's a 7.0 pH, there's a 10.0 and a 4.0. And so what that does is that's a known solution um, standard and then you calibrate your machine to that and then you know your machines within spec now these are what they call sample pots and so actually i have three units uh, the two pumps here and then actually i already have a sample pot and a uh, set of the bellow pumps that are already back there in the back of the greenhouse and so what these sample pots do is you can see that you know your pH probe and those EC probes fit in here and then you have a very small pump and it literally just pumps up keeps this sample pot full and then it drains off back into your reservoir and so you just use just to add some commentary here we eliminated these pots um, and put our probes directly in the in, reservoir uh, so that, it that way stays, we eliminate know, a, a point level, of failure and then so that we're not relying on an additional out. pump to pump it, it to up into in this sample pot. And so uh, with the probes happens. in the reservoir, so the sample it, it pots are eliminated. Back to the reservoir. And you want that circulation so that it constantly feeds the computer head what's going on in the reservoir. And so the computer then looks at the sam sampler probes and says, okay, I need to adjust. It'll kick in these pumps. It'll pull in whatever it needs to pull in and adjust. And then it just continuously does that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and takes all the manual or most of the manual effort. You still have to mix up the, the concentrates uh, that go into your uh, barrels that sit there that these pumps draw off of. And so you want your concentrates mixed up. That's the manual part. Once you get this all set up though, It'll dose, that's why it's called an IntelliDose, intelligent doser, some of them are called auto dose, and it just basically automates that whole process. So what we're gonna do is we're going to get these powered up, make sure that the uh, heads work, we'll test the bellows and the pumps and make sure they work, uh, we'll have to clean and soak the probes. Um, once we determine all that, then we'll go through the calibration process so we're going to now bench test this equipment and we don't certainly don't need all this clutter right now the first thing we're going to focus on is powering these up and determining you know that they will actually power up 
um, and kind of step through the menus on those and do all that. So we don't need the pots and the probes and the pumps. We'll move those off to the side. We'll get this to where it's a little more manageable so we can focus on what we need to do. Okay, so we got the clutter cleaned off. And I've got these two units still here because we're gonna test all three units first. And so we've got some power just off camera here. Uh, the power supply will come up. We verified the pins. Now this is a pump control that was cut off the red, white, blue, and black wires. I've just verified, you know, that they're not any remnants in there shorting. Um, don't want to get any kind of false signaling or short, you know, on any of those leads, but the pump's cut off, which makes it a little easier to manage it here on the bench. So we're going to plug in the power and then we're going to apply it to the unit. Now, the thing you got to watch out for is these plugs are identical. So we're going to need to go verify which one of these two plugs that these power and pump controls plug into and which one of these accepts the, a, the uh, conductivity probe. So one of these is a conductivity probe and one of these is power plus pump, uh, pump drive. So let me get on there and get look at the manual and find that. We'll, and then we'll plug it up and, and test it. Okay, so what we have confirmed is power and pump drive is on this left uh, connector and EC probe is on the right connector as we look at the unit. And the power is on the far left and so that'll pin in like that. And then the EC, when we get ready to test that, will be over in, in this connector. I'm going to set this back up on the tripod and we're going to see how it works. Okay, we're gonna plug in the adapter. Maybe. Okay. And then we're going to plug in the unit. Oh, we have power. Awesome. Look at there. So we know that this unit's functional. Now it all is gonna to depend too as we start to plug in the sensors and make sure that you know we can get through all of the settings, but that's a positive sign. So now we're gonna test the next two. Okay, we got the first one out of the way. Now we're gonna plug in unit number two. And we have power. And it has come up. Can actually go into the menu, exit out of the menu. I confirmed that on the other one as well. So, so far two for two. Okay, now this model is slightly different. Uh, I don't know if it was slightly newer or slightly older. Um, I couldn't find any information on that. However, it appears that even on their newest, the pinouts are all the same. So let's plug this one in and see what happens. We have power. It looks like we've got a screen. Yep. And let's see if we can get into the menu here. It's allowing us to get into the menu. So, success on the first three attempts, three for three on the control heads, that's, that's huge. Uh, like I said, these, these units are expensive. So, um, you know, you get a dosing unit, uh, IntelliDose, you know, is a, is a high quality system. They're newer, certainly now, they're made a little differently, but uh, you're in several thousand dollars just for one unit. We've got three three complete systems so uh, this is this is a great win for us all right let's keep going on the testing so we're back to the first unit I gave them just a quick clean um, just to make them a little easier to read and so if we go into menu you have dosing 
So you can set your dosing and EC settings, calibration, so you can calibrate and set up the unit. You can do and set up for manual overrides. You can set up for alarms. Uh, the clock, and you'll notice it's March 30th, 2010. So um, this is about a 13 and a half year old system, but um, you know, as long as it's still operational, uh, the good news is we don't need all three, so we can always uh, swap it out if need be. Uh, you can s configure your units and your system configuration, and then we're back to dosing. So we're gonna be stepping through all this as well, uh, but this is a great sign. And I stepped through this on the other two units as well. They're all working the same. So now we're gonna get into the meat of it where we're actually gonna start testing and setting up uh, the pumps, the EC probes, the pH probes, making sure that everything works. Once we make sure everything works, and then we'll start calibration process. Once we've calibrated them, we go mount them and put them into service. So stay tuned. The plug pinouts okay. actually to test control the which pump pumps. runs for which function. Yeah, it's so not only controlled in the software, and so it's a combination of the pinouts on the plug and the software determines which pump runs for which function. Set that to the side for a minute. Um, so what we'll do is we'll test each pump one by one in and out, because you can see the flow arrow right on the pump. And so one of the units had these extensions already on it. So that's handy. So we'll put an extension in to draw water out of the bucket. And then I could just let it like spew out of here, but I don't know how fast it's gonna be. So I'll actually put the other lead in the bucket. We'll test to pull it up and see if it's actually putting water out. We'll actually let those pumps circulate for a few minutes, wash them out. Um, so let's get into it. So we were able to get one of the pumps. This is actually, so this is EC. This is pH up, excuse me. I think this is pH up, pH down. I wasn't able to get this one to pull um, when it ran. It only ran for a short period of time, so it probably got to go into the settings. Um, this one is running continuously. And so without pulling power, I don't know yet how to manually shut it off. I went in and manually started them and they all started running. Uh, this one does run, but it's running for a prescribed amount of time. This one ran, but then quit. And so I have to do quite a bit of troubleshooting, but on a positive, I know at least one of these um, pumps works. And they're actually called a peri pump, uh, triple peri pump. And so, yeah, I saw online the technical term for it. Uh, Perry is a, an abbreviated term, but uh, they're actually not a bellow pump. They're more of, a, I guess, a diaphragm type pump. Um, but they're actually called a Perry pump. So more to come on that. But we do have some uh, fluid coming out of it. And you can see as it doses, it's not a tremendous amount. It's not like it gushes out like a geyser. Um, and then you have all sorts of prescriptive setup times you know, based on the dosing, how often you want it to sample and, and return. So a lot of learning going into this, but uh, right now we're just testing the components to see what works and what doesn't. Good news is I've got multiple pump units. So if I've got bad diaphragms or seals or whatever in those pumps, I've got you know plenty of spares to go try to make a working unit, but we're gonna keep fiddling with it, but this is a positive sign. Okay, so far the pumps have been fairly intermittent. Uh, one thing I found is they don't like to be laying on their back. Um, they like to be in this vertical position. Uh, also, the inlet sides, it takes a while to prime them. So, uh, in this one, it had a two-stage uh, EC or nutrient. So, it would run this one and then this one would run. 
and then this one runs pH down, there's no pH up, and so there's some advanced settings in the unit. Um, all three units seem to be the same, but so far I've had some success with this unit and this set of valves. So if I go into overrides and I hit enter, and so uh, force the EC dose, now I had to go into advanced settings and change this to one stage, so I'm gonna hit force. And that first pump is pumping. Now, I made sure that these would run clean. There was one that had a mud dauber um, in a couple of the lines, so I had to run it in to another uh, pitcher until it would run clean. So that's the pump one for EC. So once that's done, sorry, there's a little dirt on the screen or scratch. Hit okay. I'll go back into overrides and then I'll go to pH down. I'll hit forced. Now I'm gonna have to uh, hold this under here. And so that third pump is pumping still see a little bit of crud coming out. That's why I'm not running it back into the bucket. Um, and so this is trial and error, um, but we're starting to get there on how to understand it. So, okay. So one of the things that I found was the prior um, users had a two-stage nutrient. So that's why it was going from one pump, number one pump to number two pump. And so I had to find that in the info. Uh, let's see, that wasn't info, it was uh, advanced settings. So go into advanced settings, simple dosing type. Uh, it's either simple or um, the dosing mode is, well, let's just go back. It's either simple or something like continue. I don't know what it was. Proportional. All right, so they had simple. Um, and then on the dosing mode, they had simultaneous versus sequential. Uh, and then on the lockouts, uh, they have those disabled, which is fine. Um, but here, outputs. So go into outputs and see they have a nutrient uh, two part solution, right? And so it was going through pump one and then pump two sequentially. Uh, I'll only be using a total master blend mix. So it'll be a one part solution save. And then the other settings are, you know, pH output. So pH lower, irrigation is disabled. Water dosing is disabled, but that actually is the pH down. So you enable that and then you get a pH down, but I have yet to find out how to enable that pump. So, but right now, if I get out of here, completely out of here now, all the way back to the menu, and we go to overrides, as I showed you before, we'll do a force DC dose, pump one, all right, and then we hit okay there, and then enter on that, and we go to pH down, and we hit force. And something's happened here. Let's try this again. Well, so I changed that setting, and so it's done something. So I'm gonna have to go back and find out why pump three now is not working. 
the saga continues. Okay, that didn't take long, but I figured it out. So something happened when I went into the dose, I guess, dosing and go in there, right? And it had set up EC dosing and pH. I went into pH dosing, set point, pH set point, and then dosing time, dosing interval, and then pH dosing was disabled. And I don't recall going into disabling that, so who knows. But anyway, so I go in there and I basically have enabled the pH dosing. So now if I go and do the manual override and there's EC, which still works. Now I go into pH, force the dosing and pump three is now dosing on the pH side. So a lot of trial and error, we're getting there. Um, this would actually function now, um, but I wanna do some more testing. I wanna to try to understand how I can do pH up, pH down, uh, and do a, uh, obviously the nutrient EC. So far I've only found EC part one and two. In here is water dosing for pH up, but I haven't been able to get it to turn that second pump on. So not sure yet, so I'm gonna to have to do some more research. So we're back out here today. I did some research last night and I actually found the pinout schematic diagrams and the manual. And so I pull this plug out, sorry. And so these are the different pumps, but the pinouts uh, for pH up, pH down, etc., are need to be moved um, to actually run the pump. So the way they had this wired was this was nutrient dose part one, nutrient dose part two, and pH down. Now I don't necessarily need pH up per se, because on this plug there's actually a output for fresh water. So I can actually send that to my valve for my fresh water going into the tank. And so that's how you ultimately take pH down, but or, or could take pH down. You could use an alkali. Um, really what the water is intended for, and I'm, I'm not to that point yet, is it dilutes your nutrient. So for lettuce, at night, when lettuce, um, you know, is in the evenings and overnight, the lettuce doesn't transpire as much uh, water. And if you're dosing it with the same amount of nutrient, you can get what they call tip burn, little brown uh, areas on the edges of the lettuce leaf. And so the way to combat that is you dilute your reservoir, let's say your EC is at 0.8 and overnight you want to run it at like 0.6 or, or 0.7 uh, and so what that does is it knows uh, when you want to do that it puts fresh water into the reservoir which in turn drops your concentration of your nutrients and drops your EC reading and then in the day then the doser knows then, okay, I'm no longer needing, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 on the EC. Now I need it back to 0 0.8 and it will dose the nutrients back in to the reservoir and bring it back up. We're not ready for that yet. We just want to get the basic system to do dose the nutrients and to take the pH down. Um, and then if we see that we're experiencing tip burn, then we at least know that this unit has the capability of bringing uh, the EC levels down with uh, dilution, water dilution. So we'll have everything in place to do it, um, but we're still learning, so we want to take it one step at a time. So we're going to finish setting this up, and we're going to go get it installed. So the fans are running. 
hopefully I'll be able to uh, get the microphone close enough here. Getting ready to go through calibration, but as I said earlier, the EC was actually correct, 1.5. Lettuce is 1.2 to 1.8. Uh, when I saw that this thing had 1.5 in it and I knew what those guys grew, I went back and redid my research. And so we've been running our EC low. Uh, probably explains why our lettuce doesn't grow as quickly as we think it should. And so I was actually doing some research on what the EC for the tomatoes and cucumbers need to be. That's going to be between two and five. Uh, but I'm going to have to go back in and change those settings on this to get it uh, to 1.5. So I'll do that and then we'll do the calibration process. So I'm not going to have enough hands to do all this calibration, but basically we have solutions that are standardized. This is a 2.77 EC. So we'll put this EC probe in that solution. I use a little small uh, vial so we don't waste much of it. This is just water to rinse between. Uh, this is another one in case I want to use one of the pH um, calibration solutions in there. Um, but typically what I'll do is I'll empty this out and then put the next solution in after I clean it. So um, after the EC then you put it in pH 7 which is neutral. Once that's done then you move to calibrate to a pH 4. Uh, there is also a 10 solution but we use the 4 solution because we want our readings typically to be below 7. So. Uh, it's a little more accurate if you uh, calibrate it to a 4 solution versus a 10 solution. So, we'll be doing that and then we will be uh, firing this up to go through the calibrations. Once we do that, we'll be mixing our solutions, our concentrates, uh, and then we're going to start to test run the system and see how it does. Like I said, my hands and they're not going to be free enough even with the tripod it's just no good way to step through all that calibration so uh just do that you can see here some of our lettuce is uh going uh, we've had some non-germination but uh, you know it's doing pretty well considering the ec's been a little low on it the nutrients have been a little low so um now what we'll do is we'll use the controller uh, to bring that EC up to the 1.5 level and that'll be a good test for us and uh, make sure we get it dialed in correctly. Okay, we've completed the calibration. The probes that were in the system were no good. Uh, they wouldn't calibrate up, but luckily I had this uh, Blue Lab who now owns IntelliDose Autogrow um, the probe is compatible. So I've still got the EC probe built into this, but the pH probe is detachable. And it's the same type, and I know it works, so I mounted it on this one. I calibrated it. It went through calibration fine. And so now you can see uh, right now pH 6.4, EC is uh, 0.7, temperature 75 degrees. And so we've got a target of 6.0 and 0.8. Of course, I'm going to have to move that to 1.5, and I'll see how the uh, you know I'll see how it reacts. Uh, the pumps actually have tried to run a couple of times, so I've got to get the concentrates in there so that they can at least start to bring it up to the level. I'm going to leave this at 0.8 for now, just so it'll uh, raise it, and then. Uh, We'll also leave the pH maybe a little lower, may change it to about 6.3, and uh, we'll see if it doses them down, and uh, we should be good to go. So, so far so good. Don't forget to subscribe and share. Uh, we're not done yet. Uh, we got a little more work to do to get these reservoirs uh, started, get some of this mess cleaned up, and I've got to take my uh, outputs uh, and route them into the tank. So, uh, 
Still got a little work to do. Okay, we've got everything set. We've got our lines rigged up and our concentrates are mixed. Our pH down and our nutrient. Uh, I just did that. I had to actually been manually priming and running these. And as you can see, we've got fluid in both. We just wanted to make sure we didn't really have any more debris. We'll now route these into the reservoir and then we will, uh, you know, we will start to actually force uh, manually because for every time it pumps, then it's supposed to lower to a certain amount. And then, you know, one, you got your dosing right and you got your concentrates right and you got them matched. So we'll be doing that and stay tuned. We'll come back with the results. So it may be kind of hard to see in the sun. I can't really see my screen on my phone to tell, but EC.7, set point uh, 0 0.8, uh, pH 8.6 right now, and we want it at six. So that's gonna be the one I'm really interested in seeing uh, if it'll start to drop. And so what we'll now do is we'll actually go into the menu. Uh, we won't do dosing. We'll do not calibration, but overrides. We can do a forced EC uh, or a forced uh, pH down. And I'm actually gonna do the forced pH down uh, for a couple of times. And so then what we'll do is we'll give that some time and we'll come back and see what our um, drop has been. So it's been dosing about 15 minutes, our pH already down to 7.1. So that's a combination of the concentrates probably strong and the dosing intervals are maybe a little close together. So uh, the EC hasn't gone up any yet. So um, I think I'm going to change the, um, at least the set point for the pH from six, I'm gonna leave it at 6.5. We're just gonna monitor it, keep seeing how fast it drops. Because once it reaches that 6.5, it's not gonna dose. Uh, it'll only dose then once the pH gets up to 6.6. .6. All right, there's the EC dosing right there. And then the, uh, the pH will dose uh, in a few moments right behind it, so. Still uh, no movement yet on the EC. I figured it might take a little while uh, to come up and as you can see I set it up to 1.0 instead of 0.8 so uh, But just like anything when it kind of hits that tipping point It's gonna go and uh, You can see our reservoir temperature is a little high, but I had it uncovered and the Sun's out So once I cover it up, it should hold uh, pretty constant as long as you're not up in the 80 degree range You're okay um, And we do have a chiller unit that we could put on this if we needed to cool that water so um, We'll save that project for another day. We'll uh, come back with a status here in a little while. Okay, we're about three hours in. Our pH has actually come down to 6.9. Uh, the EC is still not raise, uh, rising yet, but um, I upped the uh, dosing on the EC side. So you'll see here now, I still have it set with 1.0. And now I have uh, it running for 15 seconds instead of four or five. Uh, so, uh, and then every three minutes. And I've been keeping an eye on it. So um, I up the uh, pH a little bit too, and it's starting to come down. 300 gallons in that reservoir, so it's going to take a little while uh, probably for that EC to catch up and you know I also noted how much nutrient um, I added into this 30 gallon bucket there's the uh, there's the EC pumping again you can see now it's pumping for uh, 15 seconds so it pumps for uh, and I checked and it is running into the reservoir so We'll check back in a little bit. Uh, better to go slow uh, instead of uh, you know over 
overdoing it and then you know you're over uh, your intended target so and I set the intended target at 1.0 ultimately it'll be about 1.5 but I just want to see you know how long it's going to take to start moving it and then we can adjust from there so it's a couple days later our EC is down to 6.3 just you can hear the uh, I'm sorry our pH is down to 6.3 uh, set 0.65, so it dosed a little more, but that's why I set it a little higher. The EC now is at 1.0. It's come up from where it started at 0.7, and uh, we've upped that now to 1.3. Uh, we still got it on a 25 second dose, two minutes between intervals. When we start, you know, getting it up there to where it should be, um, then we'll, you know, back that off and see how it maintains. Um, we always do the set points a little um, conservative to our number that way. If we do dose a little strong, um, we don't go you know too far over. So this will be the final video on this. It looks like it's set up and going. And uh, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna do our next video on a couple things. So over here on the uh, tomatoes, We'll uh, be putting the same exact setup over there uh, for the Beto's. Uh, you saw in a previous video where we did cuttings, suckers, and uh, put these in, and they are really taken off. Uh, that is food grade uh, diatomaceous earth. That keeps kind of the ants at, at bay trying to get to that water, especially right now it's really dry. Um, and then we're going to be installing our trellising cable uh, for our uh, tomahawk system so the next video is going to be on the trellising cable and how we're going to set that in here because these things are already getting to where they need to start climbing so um, don't forget like share subscribe 